Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and today Apple released iOS 16 Developer Beta 3. This is a re-release or update to the original Beta 3 version. At the same time, they also pushed out iOS 16 Public Beta 1. So finally, the Public Beta is here, available to everyone. I have a separate video about that. If you're installing the Public Beta and it's your first time moving over to iOS 16, it's 5.27 gigabytes on the 13 Pro for me. The Developer Beta 3 update or re-release is 1.5. 53 gigabytes. So still pretty large installs and it's available now everywhere around the world to all supported devices. Now they also re-released iPad OS 16 beta three and Mac OS 13 Ventura beta three. So far, there's no additional re-releases for the other betas such as watch OS, HomePod OS, or TV OS. Now let's take a look at the build number and talk about what's new. So we'll go to settings, then we'll go to general, then about, as you can see, the build number is 20A5312J. This is exactly the same as iOS 16 public beta. So public beta one and developer beta three re-release are identical in every way. So they have the same build number and everything is the same. Now, as far as what's new, there is no new modem update. So no changes there. If you are having issues with cellular connectivity, but they could have changed some things in the background to help with that as well. However, it's been pretty good on beta three. Now there is two small features or one similar feature to note that they've changed in this beta. If you're playing a song with music and you go to your notifications or your lock screen, the full size widget is finally here. We have the music playing at the bottom and then our album art here above it. So that's something they showed in the initial iOS 16 preview, but it wasn't there with any of the betas. Now it is with beta three re-release and public beta. It's also there for podcasts. So if we go into the Apple podcasts app, maybe play a podcast, I'll just turn it down here, turn it off, go back to the notification screen. You can see it's full screen. So that's the visual change in beta three re-release. It does not appear that there's a ton of other changes other than that. And most of it seems to be a bug fix and sort sort of stability update to bring it out to the public beta testers to make it a better experience. So that seems to be the major change there. It's great to see that full size widget, but there's also a couple small things I wanted to mention with beta three. If we go into settings and then go to Siri and search, it looks like Apple has removed a feature, at least for now, where you had the ability to actually hang up with Siri. So that option is not here under the main option settings. I wasn't able to find it. So maybe they moved it somewhere or they just plan to re-enable it later. But so far that's gone, even on the 13 Pro Max. So Siri call hang up hopefully makes a return a little bit later. Sometimes you get that with betas though, where things disappear and then they come back with later betas. Now, as far as anything else, one person did mention that if you scan a document and you press and hold on it, in some cases, it will actually have an outline like you get with photos when you're sort of cropping an out, out an image. So if we go into photos and you'll see under my favorites, I use this example a lot because it shows it very well. You can see here's the world trade center, press and hold. It sort of cuts out the photo of what it is, and then you can copy and paste this somewhere. So some people are seeing this in notes where you have that same sort of option. I'm not seeing that. And then some are also seeing a different animation when maybe selecting text. So if you're trying to select text within here, sometimes that works well and there's a different animation. So select all, we can reanimate there, reselect this, and then we have different options. I'm not seeing that different animation, but if you are, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. And like I said, this is a bug and overall fix, it seems as far as stability. And one thing I noticed immediately for stability or maybe a small change is if we, if we go into notes and then turn on dictation, now it's on and it's actually dictating what I'm saying much more accurately than I noticed before. I was having all sorts of issues before where it wasn't understanding what I said or getting it completely wrong. And it seems like it's much better this time around. So maybe they're tweaking some of these settings and correcting the issues it had. And as you can see, that it finished there and put in a bunch of punctuation as well. So overall, it looks like it's doing a much better job, at least with the public beta or re-release of the beta. And hopefully that gets even better over time. One other issue I wanted to mention is this drop shadow here. You can see on the white part of the background or lighter part of the background, it actually has a very 
significant drop shadow on different colors below that. It doesn't such as blue, yellow. It seems to be there a little bit and then goes away with red or blue. So depending on the light or dark areas of the screen, maybe it's putting that drop shadow to make it a little easier to see. It's really hard to say at this point, but it's also present on beta two as well. So it may not be as severe, but it's definitely there on beta two and beta three. So hopefully they fix that in the future. It could just be a bug. As far as bugs and issues, there continues to be that issue for me in messages where sometimes in a group thread, there's just no ability to enter text. It won't bring up the little dialogue with the keyboard and I can't enter it. Maybe that's fixed in this update so far it's working. Sometimes it works and then goes away and doesn't work. But right now it's been a bit of a pain over the past few betas. Additionally, the music app sometimes cuts out again. Hopefully that's fixed with this beta and Overall, the phone does seem to be staying nice and cool. So that's a good sign. It does have a lot to process in the background, especially the first time you install this, but it can be problematic for some. If you're in a very hot environment, then maybe your screen will dim and you won't be able to see it. And if you're having those issues, make sure you report those in the feedback app. Also, if we go into recent activity, you can see the notes. There are a ton of bugs. So there's a lot of known issues. And if you're having an issue, be sure to check here as there's over 50 categories of known bugs, some resolved issues issues as well. It talks about some of the new features. So if you're having a bug, make sure it's not known before you report it, but definitely report those issues if you're having them. As far as overall battery life, that can vary from device to device, but so far it hasn't been great. If we go into my settings, go to battery, go to battery health, you'll see I'm at 100% still and it's doing pretty well. I share the battery cycle count often in my follow-up videos on the weekend. And as you can see yesterday, I had two hours and 17 minutes of screen on time, five hours and 10 minutes of screen off time. You'll see I had over 50% battery usage. So quite a bit of battery usage for very little time. The beta has not been great for me. Again, the day before four hours and 15 minutes, that was definitely a lot better, but it really varies from day to day on the iPad. It's the same sort of thing. So on the iPad, I already mentioned the drop shadow that it has here. That's quite a bit depending on where it's located on the background. And if we go into settings under settings, go to battery, wait for it to load over the last 10 days, I've been getting about five hours of screen on time. You'll see yesterday, four hours and 54 minutes today. It was charged to 100% at 839 AM and I'm down to 73%. So still not great battery life. It's not much of an improvement or change really from the non beta versions either performance and everything else has been great on this, whether you're using stage manager or anything else, it seems to be working quite well with that. So no issues with this particular build. It's been pretty stable. Hopefully it gets even better. Now performance has been pretty good as well. It's been super smooth scrolling through different things, such as your app library. ProMotion is really great, super smooth, at least on 120 Hertz display. Loading games is great. Going into different apps seems to be pretty quick. You'll see that was just loading over the internet. So it took a moment, but in general, going into different apps, going out, loading them, whether it be a game or not, seems to be nice and fast. As far as overall benchmarks, I did run those on the 13 pro max. So if we go into Geekbench five, it scored 1,737 for single core, 4,758 for multi-core. If we take a look at the history, the last time I ran this was on July 6th and it's actually a little bit higher for single core and definitely higher for multi-core about 300 or so higher, about 250, 300 higher definitely a lot better and seems to be improved over the previous versions as well. So definitely an improvement there, especially since I just installed this and then ran it initially. So pretty good. I expect overall performance for most people, whether you're on an iPhone eight or iPhone 13 pro max to be pretty good. There are occasional issues with app crashes and more though. So that leads me to, should you install iOS 16 public beta? And I would say if you can make a backup and you have a computer to restore in case you need to, then go ahead. Otherwise you may want to hold off. As I typically say, if you have to ask that question, you may want to wait a little bit until it's very stable or wait till the final release. Now, as far as iOS 16 beta four, I would expect beta four, maybe within another week. I wouldn't expect it this week, probably the following week. Sometimes it can be even longer than that. A couple weeks, Apple really changes this up with these betas. And then after beta four, we typically have weekly betas. So maybe we won't have a beta for a couple weeks again, and then we'll have betas probably every week, all the way till the end of August. So that seems to make a lot of sense. Then a final release in mid September to the public. Now, as far as 
the other betas, iOS 15.6 beta 5, I would expect a release candidate as soon as tomorrow or the next day with a final release, probably next week at some point. So if you don't want to try iOS 16 betas, iOS 15.6 should be out to fix some issues with security updates, bugs, and more. So look for that fairly soon. As far as anything else, well, if I find any additional features or changes, I'll be sure to let you know in a follow-up video later this weekend. And if you found anything, anything different at all, whether that be in beta three, the re-release or public beta, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. If you'd like to get your hands on this wallpaper, of course, I'll link it in the description like I normally do. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.